can feel at home. Oh, Tammy, thank you so much for that host. I appreciate it. All right. Please, please. Hey, hey, please, please. Uh, Uncle Ray. T uh, oh, Tammy, I almost called you. Janie, how are you doing? How are you both doing? I'm doing great. Wonderful. How are you doing? I'm well, I'm good. I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I'm I'm in the middle of a juice fast, so I see. It's uh my yeah. brain's a little my brain's a little squirmy. Oh, oh, thank you for those claps, mighty mighty, and welcome in, mighty mighty. Just so you guys know, uh, Ray's probably hip to this, but this is a live show, Janie. So we're gonna have people in chat talking to us. So we're, we'll be taking questions from the chat. Uh, and we'll be uh, I'll be interacting with them as well. So if I'm starting to talk to people, don't I'm not crazy. I promise there's there's people in chat that I'm talking to. You so, won't get them dance around. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, sometimes I, I've definitely shaved my head on stream before. So who knows what's okay. next? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, uh, juice fasting is weird. I don't know. Have you? Have either of you ever juice fasted? Um, I'm yeah, kidding. I have. I'm fasting right now, not juice fasting, but I'm fasting. You know, so yeah, How I understand the, uh, the the whole keto flu and the, and the Ugh. fogginess and all that stuff. I get it. Oh know? my gosh, it's, so, yeah. it's ridiculous. But it's worth it. It is worth it. it, it, it worth what it. what kind of fast are you doing, Ray? I'm just doing intermittent fasting. Gotcha. You know? um, I'm not Muslim or anything. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, the day I started fasting happened to be Ramadan. Oh, nice! So I, I'll just roll with it. Like, okay, well, <laughs> I've been doing. I was just gonna do it for a week, you know. Right. And so I figured, you know, hey, I gotta roll with it since it felt, you know, I decided to do it all Ramadan. So yeah, you know, Man, here why I am. not? Why not? How about you, yeah. Janie? Have you ever done any fasting? Uh... Well, drinking wine throughout the day is fasting. <laughs> 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 that counts that counts yeah, I, right. I, hey sometimes the, that's the great thing about about wine or beer just i mean that's a meal in its own so like you're good you're good to go uh, right, right. so i i um uncle ray has a new album out and what's fun is that uh i would love for you guys to sort of explain how you, you sort of came together and then um, and then what's really cool is that they both uh, they they collaborated with uh, with a song, uh, which is a song mm -hmm. off of Ray's new album Twenty One Days, which uh, which you got a glimpse of what the cover looked like when he popped out there. But uh, it, it's a uh, it's it's an, it's a great album, dude. It's so good. I I, Thanks, I really man. I, I really that. well I, I I really dig where you're going with it, and I really dig the. You know your mix of, of hip hop and, and singing and soul and and you know you have mm -hmm. live instrumentation going on all over it so right. uh, so it, it, it's fantastic uh, but uh, you, so explain to people how you both met and you whoever wants to go first is fine with me well I will because I grew up uh, with uh, my cousin Alfred Armstrong okay and then on Facebook I kept seeing all these different Armstrongs and I would always see Ray. So I called Alfred's brother, Perry, and asked him, was Ray Armstrong related to Alfred? And he said, yes, uh, Alfred's with your uncle or whatever. And I called yeah, him and mm -hmm. then we're cousins. Mm. So last year when we were doing the uh, Motown 60 in Detroit, I told him I was going to be in Detroit. And since he was just uh, in Toledo, he drove over to meet me. And that's how we first laid eyes on each other. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so sweet. And and so and then history was made. And then history <laughs> was made. Uh, yeah. Ray, what no when when you found out who this person was, uh, mm -hmm. when they contacted you, what what was your first thoughts? My first re reaction, because uh, I saw the comments. My uncle Perry reposted um, a video of me singing Tennessee whiskey mm -hmm. on Facebook. You know, I just have I sang that. Uh, just put it out there because I I just discovered that. How that came about, a coworker of mine, um, he he was determined to show me a country song that I would like because I told him I can't stand country. <laughs> so he he showed me Tennessee whiskey. So I um sang that on a, a video, and my uncle reposted it, and under his comment section, she was there, and she said, "Whose child is that?" <laughs> you know, and I was like, and I'm looking. 
And I'm like, who is this? You know, who's this lady? And then I, I looked at her profile because I'm thinking, you know, maybe this is a, a, a yeah. relative or something. And I looked at the pro t profile and I saw a classic Motown. I'm seeing pictures with Barry Gordy and just countless great. And I'm like, is, is this family? Is this family? You know, I'm like, oh, this is family and I don't know about it, you know? And right. um, so, you know, and, t and time went on and we connected online and we got to meet, as she said. And uh, we just stayed in touch. And she's been, uh, very encouraging, you know, throughout this, you know, these past few years, you know, there's, I've been through a lot of, uh, peaks and valleys recently, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, she's really inspired me to, to jump back into my, my, my love, you know, music, yeah. you know, cause I've been in the music all my life and, uh, you know, I hadn't had a chance to really dive into it because of my profession, right. you know? So, um, I'm not, so I'm, I'm here full time now, full time music, you know, yeah. I, I left the, uh, the day job alone, you know, I don't know how I'm going to eat tomorrow, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Ray, you picked a hell of a time to, uh, to, to, to get into music, uh, especially with the pandemic right. going on. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has, uh, you, are you still playing with everyday people? Hey, what's up, lovely lace? I, I am, but, um, <laughs> you know, as you know, around here due to the pandemic you know it's it's slim yeah. picking so for sure for sure we haven't played I, we did a couple of live stream shows mm -hmm. um but we haven't played out we haven't gigged since last march yeah so yeah but our, our first thing we got booked isn't until june wow june 19. yeah they're putting things off <coughs> excuse me uh, uh, um down at the erie street market oh nice june 19. heck yeah. yeah so 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 um you were in Detroit, Janie, for the 60th anniversary, um, and you guys both came. How was that? How was meeting each other in real life, like when you guys actually met? How was that? Well, it was like I'd known him forever. I mean, oh. there was... <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I saw a newness or anything. It was just, hey, this is my blood. So we took it from there. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. How was it for you, Absolutely. Ray? Exactly the same. Yeah. You know, I was nervous, you know, because, uh, you know, all of the accolades and everything, you know, you know, that's, you know, and yes, so I'm like, wow. And I, I'm just, I'm driving up there and just like, wow, is this, it's almost like a dream, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I was nervous. And then when I, that lasted for about 10 seconds until, you know, she was like, Hey, you know, we hugged and we sat down and we ate. She had me cracking up all morning, you know, and I was right. like, this is definitely family. This is definitely my family. And so <laughs> it's just, it was just like, we knew each other, you know, yeah. all our lives. Yeah. Right. So, so then, um, with, with the new album, what, what, what was sort of the inspiration for you two to sort of work together with the song songwriter? Well, after I heard him on Tennessee whiskey, uh, and the tone of his voice, even though he claimed to be a rapper, I knew that. <laughs> that's what he tried to tell me. <laughs> but I knew that the <laughs> was made for his voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew his voice could do that mm -hmm. song right, and he did a hell of a job on it. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, the I, I I liked your little rapper. Like I could hear a tit. What What do you think of hip hop and and where <laughs> where music has gone? Uh, do I have to say that line? No, no. I think. Well, <laughs> I mean, because I mean, if I you like think about Ray's it, ver I like Ray's versions of hip hop. Mm. Uh, a lot mm. of it is a little deep for me, but yeah. he's mm. hanging there in between. So he can mm. go either way. I'm talking about music. Mm. He can, he can, yeah. Uh, and I felt that for him. So. I'm slow. <laughs> it's all good. The, so he's good. But I mean, like, uh, so so you're saying that that you're not the biggest fan of what music has become. I mean, especially because when you think about it, like. When you look at the history of music, I mean, Motown started those kind of beats and, and the, you know, the four on the floor and, and then those back beats with the temptations and such. Yeah. Um, and, and then so that evolved into hip hop. So, I mean, in a way, it's your fault. <laughs> Well, <laughs> no, hey, thank you for those biddies, movie my, judge, It right? evolved, but I didn't evolve. I stayed with the Gladys Knights and the yeah. Marvin Gaye's and, yeah. and the Temptations. I stayed there. I didn't evolve. So 
But anyway, every generation has their own uh, sense of music, so yeah. you have to go along with it, except the hard rap. I don't like the vulgarity in, in the hard rap, mm. but any any right. of it I, I can listen to. So I, I mean, I would I, I want to talk to you, uh, JD, about about your experience with Motown and getting into it and stuff. I, I'm, I'm sure you told this story a million times, but I, I would love to hear it from you. How did you what where were you coming from when you first met Barry Gorey? Like, where were you in your life? What like how you know, like how old were you? What was the situation like? What you know, what what was Barry's life like? <laughs> All I was, and you can count on your fingers and tell me how old I am now. So we will. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We can we 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 could skip that part. But but where were you? You know, mentally. No, I was still I was still a teenager, uh -huh. and uh, my my sister Clea, who's singing on Barbara Ann, hmm. uh, used to work with Jackie, okay. and uh, he was like uh, maybe up the street from us, lived there, and uh, he would come down to our house all the time. So once he got repetit that the Bear Gordy had written. Uh, and it was his first hit. He came by the house and told Clea that he wanted her to meet his songwriter. So since Jackie was just a friend, to me, in my mind, being a teenager, the songwriter had to be the celebrity, and I wanted to go meet the celebrity. Mm. But Jackie kept telling me that uh, I wasn't old enough. I said, but I'm, I'm tall. I was always as tall as I am now, 5'8". Mm. I said, I can dress up in some of my sister's clothes. And... Um, I can go. So finally he uh, agreed to let me go. And um, I went down and I met Bear Gordy. And I was disappointed because he was a, just a human man. I guess I was expecting <laughs> an angel or some halos on his back or something else. But, um, and I told him, if uh, you can write a song, I can write a song better than you can any day. And I'd never written a song in my life, but just being oh, a brass. Wow. <laughs> so a couple of months later Mr. Gordy came by the house looking for my songs of which I didn't have but I'd always written poetry for the school board mm -hmm. and I went to the room and I got my book of words because I didn't know the term lyrics and showed him my poetry so from that he took the um, poetry and, and taught me how to turn it into song form and to, uh, you know, m put a hook where it needs to be and make it a sellable. Uh, so that that's how I met Mr. Gordon. That was primo town. So I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, like, what was his reaction when he sort of realized that you just had a book of poems? And uh, I mean, what, what was that reaction? Well, at that, at that time, we have to remember he was not Mr. Gordy. Ah, he was just very good. <laughs> <at the end. laughs> so, just very. Yeah. So he, I guess he was glad I even had the poems mm -hmm. because then he, had uh, material that he could turn into mm. song. Okay. So he, he was very pleasant about it and he understood and he knew they were poems. So, I mean, but from there we we became great friends and have always remained all these years. Yeah. yeah. And he, he did become my angel if he didn't have the wings on his back. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so can you kind of walk us through, you know, like the creation of Motown? Because I know it wasn't just Barry who was who put it together. I mean, you were there and there was other other women involved. There was other artists involved. So can you kind of tell us how Motown well, and, and in how? In the very beginning, there's a group called the First Five, okay. which is Mr. Gordy himself, Smokey Robinson, Brian Holland, Robert Bateman and myself. Okay. We were the first five uh, that used to go over to his sister, Lucy Gordy Wakefield House, and we would create songs on the piano and uh, be glad to skip school and go over there and whatever. So even today, we remain the first five. Uh, but after that, uh, Ray Gordy, of the very event she was um, raised single to number, <laughs> Ray Lyles, uh, and Mr. Gordy eventually, they married and had a son. Uh, there was Louvain of the Andante. She was there early. Louvain did. Um, different people just began to come. Uh, Mary Wells uh, came by, and she was the first. She bought her song "Bye Bye Baby" for someone else to sing, and Mr. Gordon said, "No, uh, I think you can sing this." Mm -hmm. So that's how we began to build the company. Uh, Mark Johnson. Uh, the Temptations were two different groups. Paul and Eddie were the primes, and Otis 
had his group Otis in the distance, and his group broke up, and so did one of the primes leave. They just left Paul and Eddie, so they merged together and became the Temptation, ah. and on and on. And finally, that fine Marvin Gaye came over there. <laughs> and we didn't need nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Marvin's the man. Oh that's my God. I, I love but man. seriously, growing up, money, that's what I want was something I listened to a lot and many versions of it. Yeah, Valo, yeah. Well, here 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 she is. Um you know, with Marvin Gay, I mean, I, I saw you on a hurrah hurrah uh how do you say that? Geraldo? Geraldo. Yeah, Geraldo. Oh, yeah, Geraldo. Geraldo. Jeez. I saw you on this Geraldo episode uh, from a long, long time ago, and, and, and it was just very funny. You were sitting next to his, uh, his then uh, ex-wife or widow. I'm not mm-hmm. sure what she was at that point, but, right. uh-huh. but you made a reference to him as like he was a male chauvinist pig, and I was like, oh, my God, did she just call Barbara Gay a male <laughs> <laughs> so I, no, just... I mentioned Nikki Stevenson was the male show in this pig, oh. and I was sitting next to Kim Weston, they, who okay. was once married to Mickey. I got you. You were talking. Okay, so you were talking. Okay, I got so confused. I'm, okay, okay. So, so I, I mean, you know, there's it, no secret that that Marvin Gaye was a uh, had had his own problems, and, and you know. Uh, with his own mental health and and you know mm-hmm. drug addiction and stuff. What in those beginning days? What was he like? I mean, I'm I'm just I, I love Marvin uh, Gaye. Sweetheart, yeah, a uh, sweetheart, the, the most wonderful person you ever want to meet. Oh. He was really just down to earth, um, no big head, no just Marvin. He was wonderful wow. before you know before he went into his problems. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So in in those beginning days. Um, what what was like the what what was the steps you guys were taking that led you to what Motown became? Like what was what was that process like that got you to that to that big point to to what Motown trial is? Trial and been? error, trial and error. There was no blueprint. Nobody knew at that time. Mr. Gore, we were a lot of us were basically teens. Smokey Brian, Robert was older than myself, and Mr. Gordon was only twenty seven at that time. So who knew anything about running a record company, even though this was his dream? Right. So we just got out there and thank God it happened. Yeah. But uh, it, it couldn't be repeated because there's no blueprint to give anybody. Right. 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 Yeah. right. yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you, Motown definitely changed the game for everything. It, I mean, it, just, it, it spawned so much. Um, what, you, what, how, what, what was the the timeline with like when Stax started to pop up and all these other uh, famous now famous you know uh, uh, record studios that that was putting out a lot like of artists? Philly, yes, know. Philadelphia. Yeah. I was, I, well, we were very successful before they came along because I, I think because of Motown's success, mm-hmm. um, other. But black companies say, well, okay, I can do this. And thank God the Stacks in Philly did, hmm. you know, accomplish great strides right. because of the Motown leadership. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, no blueprint for perfection. No blueprint for perfection. Wow, I can't read today. You can't read English good either. Uh, so in those times, you guys were sort of leading the way and, and not really – you know, not really knowing what to do because you guys are building something completely unique and something completely brand new. What was some of the challenges to get these songs in front of people, especially back then in 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 those times? Uh, you know, with with the way race relations were back then, um, and and you know, I I definitely credit Barry Gordy for leading the way in a lot of the civil rights movements because of what Motown did uh, to bring attention to black artists. So I, I'm just curious, what was what were some of the hurdles and what were some of the things that were you guys were facing to get your music out there, to get this music out there and to get it to everyone? Well, you know, then they had more black radio stations. Mm, okay. So that was easy to do and to get to. Mm. And basically, I for fresh music, so they were glad to get it and play it. So in the beginning... There was no real problem, but to go into the pop world, uh, we did hire Bernie Ailes, who became eventually uh, president, vice president, whatever. But he was over sales, and 
you know, his face opened the door to a lot of the uh, pop stations and whatever. And then he hired on other uh, white uh, salespeople to go mm -hmm. in and out. And <laughs> when it was funny, our first black salesperson we hired in middle of London years later, uh, they sent him down south uh, for some records, whatever. And uh, they didn't want him down there, even though they were playing the record. Mm. And they called Barney, and Barney said, well, aren't you uh, making money off the Motown catalog? He said, yeah. He said, well, then you're going to deal with him if you want to keep making money. So yeah, that's how is. we yeah. kind of kind of got through yeah. that ooh, i love that i love that so much that that uh that he he enforced that he was like if you're if you're not yeah. mm -hmm. if you're not going to deal with them mm -hmm. then you're not going to deal with us and and mm -hmm. that's absolutely that's beautiful and, and like it, even with that notion when you think about it it's like i mean that in its own is breaking down all a, a huge barrier mm -hmm. especially in the south at that time mm -hmm. So I mean that's that's and then the kids, the white kids demanding it. They were playing right. more Motown than the black kids were. So um, it, it crossed over. The kids crossed it over. It, it's just so it's so interesting how that tradition almost it stayed it's still in like that. Yes, because because the like biggest that. consumers yeah. of hip hop is white suburban kids. So it, mm -hmm. it's just it's like a it's a very it's a very interesting thing. It's something I talk about a lot in the show is how how music has really shaped and 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 cult like art and music has really broke down so many barriers and and there's just so many um you know there's just people dismiss music and dismiss art very easily in this country and 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 to and and to think about like how important it is for for bringing this country together how important it was for Motown and these companies these black owned companies to come over into the mainstream uh, it's it's just a, uh, I mean that in its own is just it led the way. Uh, do you agree with that, or or do you have a different perspective on that? No, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly with you. When you guys were back there, and if there's no culture, there's nothing to fight for. Hmm, that's interesting. Right, right. Who said that? Bonnie. Bonnie said that. And what's up, MMA Marks? We are the chat's going, guys. Uh, I see, yeah, I see the chat. Oh, you got the chat up? Okay, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I got, I got some questions. I actually, I actually wrote down questions to today. Um, hey, I got a question. Yeah, please, right? Jump in, please. <clears throat> okay, when I came on here by myself, you ain't write no questions to ask me, did you? <laughs> Ray, Ray, no, that's not true, Ray. I'm just playing, man. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just messing with you, man. <laughs> no, he's serious. He's serious. No, he no, is no. a little bit, right? He needs it a little bit. I can see. I can feel it. I can feel it, right? No, 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 man. Even through it, this, man. even through this camera, I can feel your shade. I can feel your shade, Ray. No, Coming no, for it. No. What's up? It's all love. What's it's up, all Fox love, Drag? Man. Welcome in. <laughs> Welcome in. Uh, so, so then, uh, tell tell us about you know when things started to really click for Motown and when when uh, every when when you know the white kids started buying the albums. What was that? What was that like? What was that? I mean, like, I can only imagine as young people uh, with with this with this huge catalog of talent uh and then all of a sudden you know success and stuff how how was that handled how did you guys expand with the success how did was it was it was it an easy transition or was it like how did you because because there's definitely a point in these companies where you're barely getting by and then you know something hits and then it's like you know, it happens all the time, especially with you know young musicians and stuff, but I can't imagine mm -hmm. on a label level so from your perspective, uh, what was the how, how did that transition go from from the from you know trying to get by to you know white kids demanding your albums? Well, I don't know if we ever went through a period of trying to get by. Remember, oh. Amar Johnson would come to me, then the Miracles was way over there, then mm -hmm. Money, and then it just kept rolling. Okay. Mary Wells was Bye Bye Baby, uh -huh. so it was like nonstop success, oh. which we didn't know how to appreciate because we never done it before right. now we can look back on it and appreciate it but then we were just into it and right. we were 
we were just doing it. And then you're talking about there's the Dick Clark show that was playing the Motown records and the kids uh, were dancing and whatever. So there's no timeline that you could say uh, when they start buying the albums because looked like they were there with us from the beginning. Oh, you know, jump, huh? some of them had to finally come out in public or they say they had to hide from their parents to play the black music and yeah. so forth. There are a million stories about that, mm. but uh, they were playing it and uh, Motown just, just happened. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of Stevie Wonder as well as Marvin Gaye, and oh, <laughs> and uh, you know I know you have some credits for for Stevie as well. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, what what was uh you know how how I know he was a young young boy when he came in, mm -hmm. and were were you there when he first was around? Uh, I guess I'm getting the timeline a little confused in my own head, but. Yeah, because I was there from day one. Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. That, I'm the first five. The, fir the first five. The first five. Don't be, <laughs> don't one forget. Thank you for that, Hose MMA Mark. All right. All right. Um, hold on. We got someone saying, I feel bad for not knowing Motown, but what type of music would you describe it to be? What genre and or subgenre? What? <laughs> Motown? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Fox Motown. Drag, Motown has its own. It's like its own category, especially the classic Motown. Yeah. But, um, but if it, you know, if we, it, it's like just uh, like classic R and B, classic R and B pop. So, uh, uh, so Miss Bradford here, she so. she helped pen the the very famous song "Money." Uh, that's what I want. That's what I want. Okay, I'm gonna stop singing. That's terrible. Yeah, soul <laughs> pop. Hey, there <laughs> so there you go. So so R and B pop soul from back in from 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 the beginning when when rock and roll was first starting and R and B and stuff. No, you're okay. The foundation the found the foundation of a lot of genres that are here today. I still hear Motown. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, elements in, in, oh yeah. In so called new music now. <laughs> No, and of uh, course there's some elements in my music as well. Ex so, well, no, so yeah, for sure. It, like with this yeah. new album, I definitely hear that old sound and that old uh, mm -hmm. that that you know, I, I, I that feel is in there. No That's worries, what Fox I Drag. To do, yeah. You're good, man. We're here to learn, Fox Drag. We're here to learn. <laughs> um, tell tell me about like the technology you guys were working with, because I got a chance to tour the the museum, and that just looked like a house that you and guys. You saw, <laughs> you saw Studio A. The snake pit? Uh, is that the is that the echo chamber? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That or that thing was amazing. I was like, it. I can't believe that this is how they got reverb. <laughs> that was mm -hmm. it. In the day, that was it. Originally. That was the technology. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, boy. You just put a microphone up there and and, uh, and sing and sing in that tracks. hole. Yeah. Yeah. It was only two tracks recording. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So oh, two tracks. Huh? Yeah, two tra wow. So then you guys would record a track. Oh, oh no, no, you would record. How would you do that then? How was the everybody? Record? Everybody had to record together, the band and okay. the singer, and yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm. Uh, and then are, you're familiar with uh, you're familiar with engineering, and, and is that correct? Like you, you can get no, behind no, a board. I'm not that, I'm, I know of engineering, and I know the engineers that were there, but no, I don't know what they were doing punching those buttons. I got you. I got you. Uh, we kind of got off Stevie because I got distracted with Fox Drag, but uh, but I, I I would just what was what I mean because he was such a young like just monolith of talent when he came in there, and I mean he was playing you know his voice and especially as young Stevie, uh, what was that experience like, and and how did Stevie come into the picture? Well, Ray White of the Miracles bought Stevie to Motown. Oh, okay. and uh, once, yeah, uh huh. And uh, he, um, once he auditioned, everybody heard him. I mean, he was just magical. Yeah. Uh, Clarence yeah. Paul, who was a producer there, kind of took to Stevie and, and did all the pro early productions and worked with him. And one day, Clarence Paul was standing out in the yard talking to this lady, and uh, Stevie had just finished playing something. And I said, hey, Stevie, uh, hey, Clarence, you got to introduce me to Stevie. He can't see how old I am. And the lady said, I can, but I can see how old you are. It was Stevie's mother. So Clarence said, you, you got to get to know Janie. She might say anything. So <laughs> Lula, Lula and I became good friends after that. <laughs> <laughs> the the so then he uh 
there there was a uh, there's rumors that he was he rode a bike as a, he was he could ride a bike and he was getting around on a bike is is that true? I don't know about getting around he could <laughs> ride but he rode he did ride one yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. he even drove a car. <laughs> that I heard what? that too. I heard that it, it, oh, yeah. were you yeah, in the car? He would do all those kind of things. He would do those things. How how does how, how does that work? Wow. How how does that work? <laughs> how <It's> Stevie Wonder? <laughs> he, right. The name, There's no know? need to wonder. It's Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stevie wonder. wonder. <laughs> like in real life. <laughs> it was, it wasn't just the name apparently. You know. Hey, <laughs> I, I I'm I'm with that. I'm with that. Yeah, Stevie Stevie no could doubt. do no wrong in my eyes. No um, doubt. Yeah. Stevie so, and uh and Marvin Gaye are probably two of my biggest influences, period. Yeah. You know, across Absolutely. the board. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just just uh, yeah, it's just amazing <laughs> what they did. But uh, mm. so what was so what as you guys are getting bigger and the company is expanding, um I, I, first of all, I was just curious, you being a woman in a man's business and it still is to this day kind of a dude's business and i'm not saying that like this is a man's world or anything but i'm Mm -hmm. but i mean it is and and so like was it hard did you face any challenges as a woman uh back then and and as you guys expanded did did you face any challenges you know you know any kind of challenges at all as a woman back then well as a woman no because one reason no Barry Gordy really uh, catered kind of to the woman. Uh, like uh, his sister, Lucy Wakefield, I mentioned, she became early on because she passed early on, but she was vice president. Um, then there was uh, Faye Hale, who was the president of one of the departments. There were just women in all, Suzanne DePass, um, in all these seats that usually men hold. So only thing that um, I'm not sure that any women did was the marketing and the uh, mm. sales salesperson going out on the road. But within the company, there were plenty of women in, in all the big seats. So again, with us, since we started from the ground uh, and didn't just walk into a big company, that was that was normal for us. Then it was just everyday life. Mm. And we just grew into that. Wow. Yeah. It, uh, it, so were you just primarily writing songs or did you do anything else within the company? No, no, uh, I was, uh, I was over publishing hmm. for a long time. And then uh, Mr. Gordy's brother, Robert Gordy became a vice president of publishing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's a, you know, I talked to a lot of people and I've talked to like, um, you know, some cats from back in the day, you know, uh, uh I talked to, Oh my gosh. I, of course I'm forgetting, but, uh, uh, you know, I talked to some of these these older musicians and, you know, like when uh, like there was a story where, uh, you know, Stevie Wonder just cold cocked somebody because they're trying to get on stage. That came from a, an interview I did. And, uh, you know, there was this there was this idea in this image of Motown of of, you know, like, I, I mean, I just love the dresses and the sequence and the and the suits and all that. Um, but the swag, the swag, yeah, I absolutely loved it, and that was the front of it. But like, when I talked to these cats from back in the day, they, you know, behind the scenes was kind of a, it was kind of a rough game to play, um, and you know, a lot of them were said they carried guns and that they were in other things, you know. So I'm just curious on, was there that element, that element of, you know, uh, of, I don't want to say crime, but this, you know, the element of Gun. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Well, sure. I, I think I think that just came from success and having money, just like the rappers today. Mm-hmm. There's no need for them to carry guns and fight and do all the things they do. Mm-hmm. And it was just uh, maybe I don't know uh, uh, in their minds uh, something of success or power mm-hmm. or whatever. But there was no need inside the company now. What they might have done outside, I don't know. But inside the company was very family orientated when mm. they say Motown was a family it really was and really is today wow. um, that we all still stick together and go places and do things uh, together just mm. to even if just to lunch or just normal things that's wonderful I mean that, I mean that's beautiful that's like uh, it's lifelong family f- friends mm. of musicians I mean I 
I have musician friends from when I was super young, and I'll probably know them for the rest of my life. I love those bonds. Uh, I, I just get so then because um, the, on that Geraldo show, you know, and I'm not trying to besmirch anybody's name or anything like that. Not not any more that than Ray Singleton did, but uh, you know, there she was kind of telling us, you know, a little bit of the behind the scenes in her book. And, you know, there was a little bit of prostitution and pimping and stuff. So that's why I kind of came into this. I was just like, wow, I, I didn't realize that that would be, it, you know. Well, we won't, we won't leave it blanket like that, like the sure. ladies in the company was prostitute. And she wrote about herself. Mm. She said she did that. Mm -hmm. So we don't want label that on the other women and some well, of them might have but they didn't write about it no but <laughs> i wasn't saying i wasn't trying to say he was pimping any of the you know singers or anyone within the company and and i think this was before motown anyways right like the that whole I, I don't know but they were married so <laughs> hey man and wife so <laughs> that, that's on them though right no i you know it just uh -huh. it just it just sort of blew me back a little bit especially with you know the it, it, i don't know <laughs> There was actually a moment that I want to address that I'm not sure um, if maybe you misheard the question and maybe you're but uh, but Geraldo asked you uh, how you felt about the the Beatles covering money and you started in like uh, and then you were like oh I'm very happy about it and it seemed like you had something to say about it and and then you changed oh, it to oh it was it was probably the publishing of it mm. the the Beatles wanted to release money as a single mm -hmm. and at that time robert gordy was over publishing mm -hmm. and he did not give them the rate they wanted and i'm thinking i mean give them the rate they want because whatever rate they're getting uh they would sell more than somebody else would you know at the higher higher rate this yeah. is what i'm thinking mm -hmm. and uh, probably that was what and it still bugs me today that they did not, not, yeah, so I may go, eh, when you need to see <laughs> but uh, even from, <laughs> even from that album, mm -hmm. I've made more money off the Beatles than anybody else's single, yeah, continuously wow. from the Beatles, yeah. Wow. I'm living in Beverly Hills because of the Beatles. <laughs> So you're okay with the Beatles then. <laughs> oh my God, I love that so much. I, I love that so much. It, it, um, it, so so every time someone covers that song, you know, from uh, well, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, every time, you're, you're getting a piece of that. Thank God, yes. Over 200 <laughs> times, yes. Oh my God, that's so good. Wait, so wait, that song's been covered over 200 times? Yes. Officially? Wow, yes. that is so that is That's nuts. amazing. Yeah. Valo that is amazing. Valo Infinity uh it says that he has a uh, he has that tune on vinyl. Yeah. Um uh -huh. yeah, the Beatles are amazing. Yeah. I I love the Beatles too. Uh I it just was like I I just saw you doing this and then and then and then you change your tune real quick and, and which is understandable. You're on national TV mm -hmm. and there's no need to step <laughs> on people's toes on national TV. <laughs> Uh, but but it, it just it just caught me and I, I just thought I, I, that's awesome. Um, so then I don't know like uh, what did you do then with uh, how long were you with Motown uh, professionally? Because I know that they went through some changes and now Motown is Motown. Well, when they did the first sale to um, I haven't even forgot the name of the record company now. When Motown did its sale, hmm. um, so, I, I'm not sure. I can Google it. Was it wasn't it Tamla first? No, that, that was the name of Motown, Motown Tamla. That was one yes. of our labels. Yeah. But but okay. we sold out to uh, a bigger company, MCA Records. MCA. That okay. was the first sale. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, then Universal. I okay. See. So mm -hmm. so. so you, you did, oh please finish. We, we did the sale. That's all I was trying to say. Okay, mm -hmm. and then so were you? Oh, in 1988. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so you were with Motown all the way up until 1988. Uh huh. Wow, wow, that is such an expansive career. From um, the beginning, all yeah, the way from to the 1988. Oh my god! So, w mm -hmm. what ended up happening with when when the company sold? What what was the? Why did you leave? Oh well, I mean, I guess the new companies probably pulled put in who they wanted to put in. Mm. But uh, you remember, I was a songwriter, so I didn't really need to follow them for for a job or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. 
And then so throughout your career with Motown, who are who are some of the people that you wrote for? And we already sort of went over Marvin and Stevie, but uh, who who are some other people that you wrote for? That... Well, just about every, Mary Wells, mm -hmm. uh, your old standby with Smokey. Oh. Um, then uh, I, every, I see I can't even name the people now, but just <laughs> about okay. everybody there. And then outside, um, uh, Will and Jennings. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, Ronnie Millsap. Uh, golly, so so many people. See, I can't I'm even sorry. Think of them. You know what? Don't you don't have to sit here and list your entire career credits. Um, <laughs> but that was really interesting. You know, Waylon Jennings and I saw that you wrote with uh, something for Willie Willie Nelson, and uh -huh. so what, did you take sort of a dive into country music? I mean, obviously. Uh, no, oh no. I'm I'm Missouri born. That's all I have to say. Um, That's nothing but country. Yeah, I'm born in the same place. Wow. Born in the same place. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow. Where, where Where were you both? Where were What's the town called? Charleston. I was born in Charleston. You were Charleston yeah. too. What you well, I was born in Sykeston, but we lived in Charleston. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh huh. You know, that, uh -huh. you know mm -hmm. it's like right up the way. The, where Where we're from, it's like a whole bunch of, like you could fit all of these little towns. And on the south side of Toledo, almost <laughs> like you know, like Charleston and Sykeston mm -hmm. is like going from my house to downtown. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's all the same. It's a, area, it's, a it's, it's it's country is country gets. Yeah, okay. it's so, country. Yeah. So then, did you did you grow up with country? I mean, was that? I mean, were you a fan? No, no, no. Uh, no, no. Uh, my, I grew up with a minister father who I was not allowed to listen to secular music. Oh. We could listen to uh, Patty Page. And Bang Crosby, he called him. He didn't say Bing, he said Bang Crosby. Bang. Bang. <laughs> so That's awesome. The three of us, my sister, my brother, and I, when they would leave, my parents would leave, one of us would stand by the door to look out, mm. and the other would crank that old Phil Cole radio up and find <laughs> some blues music. <laughs> and and you know, then when they you know, come in, on guard would say they're coming they're coming and then we would, we would change the radio back you know what's crazy is i used to do the same thing when i was a teenager about we couldn't play wow <laughs> play the old, my own music in my house you wow. know i had to hide my demos from my mom you know my dad <laughs> uh, my, uh, my brother would be like here she come here she come you know what i mean we yeah. had to turn it you know yeah you know, wow albums. So that's the same thing. Wow. Yep. Same thing. Dude, my, my dad just let me do whatever I want. My mom, on the other hand, <laughs> who was a very strict Catholic Mexican, who was like, he doesn't watch the Three Stooges, he doesn't watch the Simpsons, he doesn't watch <laughs> he doesn't watch Eddie Murphy, Delirious, he doesn't he, and my dad right. was like, as soon as she's gone, we're watching everything. <laughs> We're watching everything. I remember watching Eddie Murphy Delirious as like an eight year old. Oh, just like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I love that stand up special to this day. It is so good. But um, classic. But but so you had uh, so you had kind of a strict upbringing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, so what, that's why the minute I could become loose. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah. You were held down for too long, right? Yes, yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the same with Catholic girls too, you know. Like, uh, what's up, Dex? Welcome in. Uh, you know, those cat the girls who go to Catholic school, they they tend to. It's just something about repression, right? Like, there's something about someone telling you no. Yeah. That makes you. Yeah. That make is that something that you've kind of carried your whole life when people tell you no, not to do stuff, you you kind of go against that. Well, yes, if it's something that's not going to harm me, right. uh, yeah, really, because uh, you don't want nobody telling you what you can't do, mm. or you have to show them that you can do this. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, what did your what did your uh, your your father and your 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 pa family think when you were you know off to Detroit and and running around with you know musicians of the secular branch? What what was that uh, reaction? Well, it kind of broke them in first because by her being older, mm. uh, she sing and then she would get a few little gigs and sing around. And uh, daddy didn't like it, but uh, he couldn't stop at that age, you know, once she got grown. Yeah. Uh, so he kind of accepted it. Yeah. Mm. 
So it's easier for me hmm. because she opened the door. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, so he he accepted it. Did he accept it after after he saw your success, or was it? Did he accept it before the success? Well, he accepted it before the success, mm. my success, because of her. Oh, okay. Because of her, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, nice. Well, that's that's nice. That, that's great. I, it's always sad mm -hmm. to me when I hear musicians talk about how their family were so against that against their choice to go be a musician and stuff it's it's just such a it's really a shame and you know there's certain people who go off and become doctors because their dad was a doctor and his dad was a doctor but really he just wants to play guitar and you know and in in a smoky mm -hmm. bar and hang out um but mm -hmm. but it's just always a sad situation like that did what did when you I mean, obviously, you were meant to do this. You were meant to be here. I mean, what, I mean, do you believe that that you were meant that this is something that was meant for you? I, I believe truly because that's something that I had never dreamed of being a songwriter until I told uh, Mr. Gordy that lie <laughs> that I could write songs better than he could any day, and I never even written a song. So, I mean, that's how it happened. <laughs> well, I, I, I love that attitude. Is that an attitude that you've? you've kept your whole life this this um i mean because because that's very <laughs> to, to, that's a very bold lie i'm not not saying that you're a liar <laughs> but i'm saying is that something that you've always sort of um like the the that tenacious like i gotta <laughs> i gotta pursue this and it, no matter what is is that something that you sort of held on to well, I wanted to see the celebrity, and I just saw a man standing there. So hey, and he's writing songs. So if he can do it, I can do it. I yeah. mean, what, what's the challenge? There you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah, I mean, there you go. I mean, that, that's the interesting thing about celebrity. That's the interesting thing about um, you know looking up to somebody, and and and, mm -hmm. and uh, you kind of get this sense that like they can do no wrong, and mm -hmm. and I think that was part of the pro not problem, but part of the that that uh that that uh sort of when i heard that you know barry had this other side to him you know it's like that threw me off but it always throws me off but i don't know why it's like musicians are are artists and artists tend to have their their situation you know they tend to have their own mm -hmm. demons and 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 that's i mean it's part of being an artist is having these weird demons that sort of drive your art in in some off way but it it's it, it, it's it's an interesting thing to think about i suppose uh so uh so what did you end up doing after uh, well you already said that uh you, when you left motown you you were working just on your own what did you ever mm -hmm. go and create any companies did you ever start your own publishing company like what what did you do with your success as well, you were growing well, into your career the last, last 30 years i've uh done an award show here called Heroes and Legends, and we call it the Hell Award. Okay. Uh, and that came through by, because in, in Motown, in the publishing department, I was seated next, my office was next to the man that did the song pushing and placing. So a lot of times kids would bring him songs uh, to place with somebody, and he would turn the song down. Uh, and I would think, well, he could have saved that song. If he'd have said, well, you got to make it a little more melodic or you maybe you got to start off with a hook or use the title more, something about that song to me was savable. Hmm. And I said, well, I'm going to help these kids when I get some money and can do that. And being a Gemini, the other mind say, well, when are you going to get the money to do it? Just do it now. Yeah, and uh, right. I formed the Heroes and Legends, <clears throat> uh, where we honor a lot of people in the industry, uh, deservingly so that have had milestones of success but never been honored but the real purpose is to give um students of the arts scholarships mm. so for the past 30 years that's what i've been doing that, that is so wonderful that is such a that is such a, a beautiful thing to to do hey what's what's up uh i i still life mr life i i, I still don't know what to call you I'm sorry. Is it Marianne? Is that your? Uh, yes, I will call you Marianne. I think that's who you are. I know who hey, you. Shout are. out to. Go ahead, please. Shout out to Chaotic Dex in the um, comment section singing "Money." <laughs> <laughs> Best that? thing in life is free. Yep, right. exactly. We give it to the birds and bees because that's what right. I want. Uh, 
Yeah. The the the, I, I actually was I, I did find your that that company Hal, and um, it was really mm-hmm. weird that uh, my friend Herschel Abram was was uh, was a member of the or was was following that page. So I'm just curious if, if I don't even know if you know Herschel Abram or the Abrams. I know his dad is a minister, and um, yeah. Anyways, it, it's it's it was just an odd thing that I saw that he liked your page. So I was like, well, maybe she knows him because she's out in L.A. But yeah. <laughs> but Facebook is such a weird dumpster fire. So yeah, okay. My name yeah. is Marianne, or just M. Okay, that works for me. I'll probably just go with M. I I'm just terrible okay. at all these things. Um, yeah. Let me uh let me let me look at my notes here because I, I have I have some questions in regards to um oh my goodness. So I, I had some questions in regards to that panel of of because I watched that Geraldo thing and it just it really was an eye opener and, and they were saying that Diana Ross had sort of an, an attitude issue. And, and I'm just curious, is, is, is that something that you witnessed? Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not trying, again, I'm not trying to disperse her name or anything, but, uh, but I know this is part of it. Ego is a part of this, this, this business. And uh, I, I'm just curious on what your perspective of that was. My perspective of Diana Ross mm-hmm. uh, was always... She was, she always knew what she wanted Mm. and she went after it. Mm. And um, my thinking on that is when a woman is, you know, aggressive and go after what she wants and knows what she wants, she's a bitch. A man, when he, when he does the same thing, he's great. He's powerful. Look at him. He's the man for the job. So Mm. I think she got a lot of backlash Mm. uh, that was not due to her. Yeah. She she was a strong woman and she did know what she wanted. But as far as treating people nice, um, I always saw her treat people and she treated me nice. Mm. Uh, but I've always seen her nice to other people. So other than, other than just her, her force and her direction of what she wanted and she went after it, yeah. I applaud her. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. Um the mm-hmm. it's even to this day you know, it, it, like me, I've worked with several women in, the, in in music and like been on the road with them. And, and and there is still this 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 weird thing where we're the men in the band because it's mostly dudes. And then it's like one lady. Right. And it, 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 there is sort of this um, this dismissiveness to it. And it's it's very frustrating when you see it because it's like. They're just trying to say what they need, you know, like she's just trying to tell you what they want. And, and then if, for mm-hmm. whatever reason, they're just like, you know, dismiss it. And, and it, it is still it takes place to this day. And I can't imagine what she had to face because, you know, things I, I feel like things have gotten a little better in the front of, you know, women's rights and, and how women are treated. But, uh, you know, like back then, I couldn't imagine what. You know, like, because back then it's like a woman speaking her mind was she was speaking on a line, you know, like it was considered being, you know, well, how dare you speak to me like that? You know, it's like you're just a woman. It's a, that's the vibe I get. I wasn't there. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but you're right. You're definitely right. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me tell you this little tidbit about Don and myself. We were at the uh, studio one Saturday. Mm-hmm. And so by being Saturday, no employees were there. I think somebody was in the studio recording and uh, just nothing to do uh, to hang around. So Dinah said, well, let's rent a car and just drive around the city. I said, Diane, we don't have any money to rent a car. So she said, we go rent the car in Motown's name. And by the time the bill comes, we'll have our checks and we can pay for it. There is of course, so we can pay for it. So wow. we went this yellow Chevrolet convertible on there getting we rode around and whatever but sure enough it worked out exactly like she said by the time yeah we told her we had already paid because we got our checks and everything was forgiven but this was her mind Mm. this is the way the way she thought i I was just thinking we don't have no money we don't need no money we got motown we can just rent the car where there's a will there's a way (laughs) we got motown we don't need any of that um So we got a question from the chat, and um, it's from Wild But Sober. 
he really wants to know. He really wants to ask. Do you prefer waffles or pretzels? And and not 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 like those little hard crappy pretzels, but uh, like those big soft warm ones. Uh, so th- that that's the question. I prefer the big soft warm men. <laughs> Nice. Hey, nice. bet you wasn't expecting that answer. No, I was not. No, I was not, Ray. I was not expecting that answer. That was an amazing answer. Thank you so much. What about you, Ray? Are you waffles or are you big warm men? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I well, no, definitely not the big warm men. Just playing, but, uh... <laughs> just playing man. Let me see. I like pretzels and I like waffles. I can't yeah, but decide. you got to choose one. I can't decide. I want both. I got to choose one. You if got to, one, man. You got to. It's just how it works with Wild But So. It got to be the. It got to be the pretzels. Do the pretzels come with cheese? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay, like it's yeah, however you want pretzel. it to be. Like like if if okay. it's a it's however you're imagining it, you know. So like if, if you're seeing it's waffles with berries and and whipped cream and and powdered sugar, that that's it. And if it's a pretzel with pretzel. cheese, yeah, <laughs> I want the pretzels. I want the pretzels. You know what? Yeah. I mean, I love waffles, but I I just the sugar is, is not good for me. The sugar. Yeah, yeah. Because the pretzel is sugar too when it breaks down. Exactly. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, Janie, you, you've, you, 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 you've kept a great health throughout your life. What's your secret? Like what, what, I mean, you're, you're, uh, you're here and you're the first five and, and you look great. Uh, what's your secret to maintaining? I don't have a secret. Again, like you said, country girl, you you eat whatever they put in front of you, and I still do. <laughs> well, fair enough. That that's a great. Uh, the never-ending pretzel is what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, <Never>. pretzel gang, <laughs> better calm down with the pretzel gang. Um, you know, Ray, I feel like we've been neglecting you a bit. Uh, what? Oh, I'm I'm enjoying. I'm just sitting back listening. I, I'm some of these, you know. Stories are new to me as well, so yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I we're we're gonna get back to JD, but I do want to talk about Twenty One Days just for a little bit at least. We gotta get it in a little yeah. bit, <laughs> just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. You're all, you're here, you're here, you're already here. Right, we might as well right. talk about. It. So Twenty One right. Days, tell tell us about it. What was the what was the conception like? What what were you going for when you were looking to put out an album like Twenty One Days? Well, first of all. Um, the first song was was a songwriter, wow. which she she uh, contacted me and she said she heard my voice on it. So I went, once I recorded that, and that kind of had a a little hiccup in it too, because I recorded at home and I sent it off to my nephew, um, and he's busy. He's out on the East Coast. He's a producer, so he mm. has a you know he has a lot going on. So um, <clears throat> waiting for him to mix it. I ran into a childhood friend, like eighth grade that, you know, he's a musician too. So he had a studio. Oh. So he helped me finish. He helped me finish that. And he, plus he added like guitar. His name's Christopher Antelet. Oh, okay. Shout out Chris. Hey, you know, we, we went to, we went to uh, grade school together, but so he helped me finish it. And, you know, we just had so much fun finishing that record. I was like, let's just do a whole album. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it just kind of, it just, it just grew legs. I would go over to a studio and just literally just start touching the piano. He pick up a guitar and it, music came out of it. And um, as far as uh, like 21 days, uh, as you notice, it's spelled D-A-Z-E. So mm-hmm. there's many layers to it. You yeah. know, uh, days meaning days. Like um, the song 21 days is inspired by my, my experience on the railroad. You know, and and me being not a railroader anymore, I'm I'm seeing a lot of things in retrospect. So that you know, it was like I, this is this is the music that was inspired while I was in this miserable cloud. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So what was miserable about like you? A, just weren't happy with your job. The lifestyle, the lifestyle. Mm. Um, and so, I, first of all, I wasn't meant to be no railroad conductor. I'm a I'm an artist. I'm a yeah. I'm a creative. You know, so uh, doing the same. Well, not really the same, but, you know, living that lifestyle for a decade and a half just was just eating, eating away from me, you know, and plus it wasn't healthy. I wasn't uh, sleeping right. I wasn't eating right. Um, the home life was, it was challenging for, to keep that all together because I was always gone. Yeah. But um, 
and just the, the environment. It just ain't for me. Some people mm -hmm. love it. It just was not. I was a, a square peg out there. Wow. You know, yeah. uh, so. Um, but yeah, and, and, and as life will have it, you know, things happen to where I'm free from that. You know, I'm not uh, making the same amount of money. I'm just a judge. It's still new to me, but I'm happier yeah. because I'm living, you know, I'm doing my passion. This is, you know, I've been, you know, I taught myself how to play the piano when I was four. Oh. You know, music just has been a part of me since I can remember, you know. So, um, you know, that always makes me happy. So the fact that I can, you know, jump back in and pursue that, you know, that that's that's what it's all about. I'm, it's exciting. I don't even know what's ahead of me, but yeah. I'm ready for it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that is I mean, that's amazing. The I mean, to that that feeling, that feeling when you step away from that. I I, I was launched into the music like I mean, I yeah. was always in the music, but I was I, I lost my job because I was just doing too much. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and there's nothing worse than having to come home to your wife and a, and a newborn baby and say, Hey, I lost I my job. <laughs> I lost my job. Uh, rent's due in two weeks. Uh, what yeah. are we doing? <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, imagine, imagine making railroad money for 15 years and then saying, you know, wow. Hey, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> what was, what was your, uh, what was the reaction from your fam? Well, <laughs> um, it was mixed. It was yeah. mixed. React. You mean the immediate family? Actually, because of the stuff that was going on with the railroad and, mm. and the experience that I had, they were like, you need to get out of there. I don't know what you're going to do, but you need to get away from that. You know, that that's killing you. Yeah. Um, but um, some people think I'm totally insane. <laughs> some people are like, you know, grow up, man. You've been trying to do this music stuff and, and you know, you got to get it real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, some yeah. That. So it's, oh, yeah. So it's been mixed. So I kind of. I kind of try not to pay too much attention to it because, you know, I finally got my, my vision and my passion back. Yeah. You know, that was damn near dead inside of me for years. Wow. And it's slowly waking back up. So, you know, whatever happens, I'm happy because I get to create, I get to express myself. And, um, you know, some people like it, everybody ain't gonna like it, but it's enough people to do. So, yeah. you know, and, uh, I wear my heart on my sleeve and you can hear it in the music. You know, a lot of questions can be answered. You know, listening to the album and um, and if if you got another question that don't answer, I'm still making music, so that don't you know keep keep listening to the music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll tell you everything about me. Yeah, most every definitely. single thing. I, I put my soul into it. You know, you uh, you you uh, had the fortune of of of, of winning a, a grant from the yes. Toledo Arts Center. Um, did you end up using some of that, that grant money for the, the, your album? Is that, is that, well, no, no, no. I used it actually to, uh, well, kind of, hmm. uh, I used it to get a new MacBook. Oh, nice. You know, Cause all my, uh, all my the stuff I was making music, making beats and stuff on yeah. was just so outdated. I had an old PC, yeah. a MIDI, a MIDI board with a missing key. And, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my situation was just all bad. Yeah, you yeah. know my son's got better studio than I do. <laughs> After growing up breaking all my shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. No, so they got. I got to ask, hey, can I use your? You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, yeah. So, but so I, I got a uh, got a MacBook for that, and um, I'm learning Logic now. Learn mm, Logic Pro X. Yeah, you know. So yeah, so the I, that that's that went straight to that. As soon as I got that, I'm like, it got to go back into to yeah. my tools. Yeah, you know, most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. and congratulations on that, man. That you're Thanks, well man. well deserved, well deserved. You too. Oh, you as well. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, so how was uh? Are you getting kicked out? No, no, no. I guess I'm talking too loud. Oh, for real? Yeah, my, my voice carries. Yeah. Tell him it's a private room. Like, <laughs> it's a private room. Tell me. Too. Right. Um, yeah. the, oh, I forgot. So how was, uh, you know, Janie, I, you know, like to sort of get us back into sort of your timeline. Um, I, I, what was, uh, what, what, what was life after Motown for you? What were you? Were you uh, were you just writing freelance and and like what what was your trajectory after you sort of left and and went on off on your own? Well, I mean, you may leave the building Motown, but you don't leave the people. Right. So you know, you're still associating with the same people, and everything basically is the same. And you're writing tunes with the some of the people that you work with in that Motown building. Mm -hmm. So nothing really changed. 
Yeah. Well, now, when was the, you know, like, and and I don't mean this in any kind of disrespectful way at all, uh, but there is like, you know, careers tend to have their peaks and their valleys. Was did you ever did you ever experience a valley in your career as a songwriter? Did you ever experience any low points in writing, and and with uh, you know, with with your career in general? Did you ever have any low points? I mean, it just seems like you walked into, into a, a cannon and you were just launched into the stratosphere. So, uh, I mean, was there any lulls or uh, what was that like? Well, there might have been, but by me working there also at nine to five and then writing. I, I never felt any pressure, you know, as long as you're still getting a check. So <laughs> yeah, there, there were, I guess there were the most quiet times probably was after we relocated to California. Mm. Uh, it just didn't have that Detroit feel to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What about, what about California didn't, what about it didn't have that feel for you? Well, I don't know what about it. I mean, the feeling is a feeling. So <laughs> I understand. It went, it went, you know, well, one thing there. We, we became big business. Mm. Where in uh, Detroit, we're housed in this. Well, we had two or three buildings, but they were all small houses. And uh, out here in LA, there were like ten story buildings, and everybody's on a different floor. Mm. They hired somebody new. Uh, you out somewhere and the person say they work in Motown. You say they don't work in Motown because you've never seen them because they're on a different floor. Mm. So it was the separation, I guess, and just yeah. a lot of big business things we weren't used to in Detroit. How was that dynamic as, you know, when you when Motown is this huge Goliath of a of a of a, of a, of a I mean, it was just a beast. I mean, it's Motown. What, how did the dynamic change as success sort of took over? Uh, for the people inside? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't specify. Yeah, so for your okay. relationships between, like, especially between, like, the first five and, and those early days, how did the dynamics sort of shift, or did they well, shift? That, I still talk to Smokey. I talk to Brian almost every day. He calls for any kind of dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, and uh, then Mr. Gordon on occasion. So for is that, the people never changed. Mm -hmm. It was just the situation that changed. I mean, like I said, the new people coming in, but they were not back from Detroit. So they were not like part of the family family. So uh, the family always remained intact. Mm -hmm. But the, it, it was the, the newness and the difference uh, when we came to LA. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, because I, I, you know, coming from the Midwest myself, uh, I was a uh, uh, the 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 shock of California for me was just I mean I wasn't even in you know I wasn't even in mo yeah I wasn't even anywhere close to what your career is and I went out to California mm -hmm. for music, uh, but like some of the big changes for me which I I actually liked it was was just the sunshine the weather I I just felt like the everyone was so laid back every there's just this laid back feel in Cali that I I just really appreciated. Um, much more than Toledo, I'll tell you that. But uh, and now I'm back in Toledo. Hey, but it's uh, <laughs> but it's uh, I don't know. It w was that something that sort of because um, for me it was sort of a shocker, kind of a, sh uh, a culture shock for me when I went into uh, when I went to California from the Midwest. I'd never you know lived anywhere else. Was it was it a, a culture shock for you when you first went out there? No, I had been to California at least 20 times or more. Every time I took a vacation or wow. had a weekend off, I came to Cali. People say, don't you know anywhere else to go? I said, but I love L.A. <laughs> so <laughs> so when we were moving, I, the word was out we were moving to L.A. That was right up my alley. Oh, okay. So, so you're not, ready for it. You're ready, still love LA. ready yeah. for a change. I, it was, it was just, just the business change, but not mm. L.A. I love L.A. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're still there in, in, in Beverly trying Hills. trying to get Ray out here. <laughs> hey, Ray. Yeah, I, hey, I'll, I'll probably be that way pretty soon. <laughs> Sooner than you know. Hey, hey Mike, I want to ask you a question, though. Um, okay. Like, you know, being from here, you know Toledo, mm. and Detroit is just right up the way, but uh, being a musician as well, uh, what did you notice, if any, uh, difference and the creative energy out west and here as opposed to here um you know what there was the creative energy for me was um 
<clears throat> I, it, for me, when I first got out there, it wasn't. I wasn't really taking it seriously. I, I just, it was the first time out of my house. So I was just drinking and being a young yeah. dude, you know, yeah. running around yeah. the yeah. beach, Been chasing, there. chasing women, right, right. all that, all yeah. that nonsense. And, um, so I didn't take it that seriously, but when I did, um, and when I, the scene sort of developed when I was out there, cause when I first went out there, the, the music scene had kind of died out in San Diego. And mm -hmm. so, when I first got there, there wasn't a whole lot for me to sort of grab onto. But as I sort of got a network of musicians and a network of people, and as the music scene evolved, um, for me, it, it was the energy is just through the roof. I mean, like compared to here, I mean, the the strange thing about the Midwest is that we have a lot of like metal and heavy metal music. We got a lot of rap coming here. Um, out there, they have a lot of just like like they got like Everything. reggae and they got like soul right. and funk and not to say that soul and funk is not in the Midwest because come on Motown what, what am I talking mm -hmm. about but but still the the energy was just so different that I I just loved it you know and it, especially when I started taking music seriously um, it mm -hmm. just you know people are out in California to win you know well, especially mm -hmm. if you're a transplant you're not going to California. If you're a musician, you're going to California. You want to go and, and make a mark. And right. um, so a lot of people were taking it seriously when, once the scenes were really coming together. Um, compared to here, I mean, when I left Toledo, this was like in 2006. I don't know if you remember the music scene here in 2006. But there what was... Scene? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What exactly. Scene? So so it, it just sort so, of... It, it was just a complete shock and it was a complete change of pace. And it was just, I, I just loved it. I, I just loved the whole lifestyle. Yeah. I love that it suns out all year round and, 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 right. you know, everybody's just at the beach all the time. And, and it, there is something weird about people who are, who are from California. I had a long, I had a hard time relating to people from California for a long time. Mm -hmm. Turns out I married, uh, married a Californian, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. but it, it was, uh, his wife is a great singer. Too, yeah, as well, musician awesome. as well. Hey, They're thanks, like Rafi. A, a dynamic duo of music. <laughs> the dynamic duo. Uh, yeah. I, I well, I, the reason why I asked Mike mm -hmm. is because, um, you know, in my experience, I've gone different places and I've ex had that experience, like you described in Cali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like to where what you can do with the music um, is is broader and right. like you know you get more bang for your buck, so to say. You know, because the stuff we doing here, if I was to do that out in the East Coast or on the West Coast, I, it would have been more productive. It would have been, you know, uh, but it's something about this area the, as far as the inspiration and the music that I come up and how this area area affects what I come up with. Yeah. That's unmatched. You yeah. know, so when I've gone different places, I've act in retrospect, I've actually noticed a difference like yeah, the music might be a little bit happier, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? but, but I say that to say, you know, I appreciate what being around here uh, makes you create because that's 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 what sets us aside. Yeah. Because when I go to different places, you know, I've heard so many times over the years, like, where are you from? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. where are you? know what I mean? It's like, because we in a, we in a, in a melting pot, really. Yeah. We right here in the Midwest, we get influences from everywhere. Yeah. You know, and that comes out. You can hear you can hear the difference in East Coast music, West Coast music, yeah. Southern music. But we have something special up here. And I think it's um finally coming around to where it's getting its recognition again. Yeah. You know, like in the days of uh, Motown. Yeah. You know, and all of that. I think, you know, there's a lot. There's people just out of Toledo alone who've left and uh like like Jennings. I yeah. went to Star High School with him. Chester, yeah. Chester Jennings, you know. Was it, and, uh, was he, he cool? He went out to New York. Did you like him in high um, school? We we didn't we didn't hang. I didn't dislike him. He was cool. I knew he sang and you know, I rapped and stuff, but we didn't hang out or nothing. We you know as a matter of fact, I ran into him afterwards. Uh, you know, I think he was two albums in. Mm. Uh he had like a he had like a birthday celebration here in mm. Toledo. Nice. Uh came in town. Uh you remember Remember when the NBA player Jim Jackson had a club? You remember Jim Jackson? <laughs> oh man, I don't, okay. Well, I don't Jim watch Jackson is a, yeah. He's he's a he's an NBA player from Toledo. He played for the Lakers. Oh, okay, uh, cool. At one time, yeah, nice. Um, but uh, he played for a lot of people. But um, <laughs> he had a life. Jennings had a birthday party at Jim's club, and uh, I 
So, you know, I was like, hey, you remember me from high school? Man, he didn't know who the hell I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't you know, remember but, you, Ray. You know, but, I mean, and I get, I get it. You know, yeah. people I don't remember in high school, but I was like, hey, you don't you don't remember me, man? You know, you know, you know, <laughs> I don't know you. I mean, say, you know? <laughs> and then when you think about like the when you're launched into a career like that, you're meeting thousands of people, of people. Yeah, thousands people. and sharks yeah. and, and and dirty business people and mm -hmm. and friends and 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 new associates. Yeah. So it's like it, you only have like, so sorry, much dude. mind capacity for that, you know? Like you can only <laughs> hold so much information in right. your brain before it just starts right. dissipating into the either and i've had that same experience you know people hey way and i'm like i feel so bad because like you know they they giving me details man yeah. hey remember this and, that? and i'm like i don't even know this person's name yeah. man like just the other day just the other yesterday i was talking to somebody and and I, they asked me because oh, they were like are you from here and and I was like, yeah, I graduated from Clay High School. And, and they're like, oh, then you know my husband, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, I don't know your yeah, husband. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't oh, know your God. husband. I'm sorry. I don't know her. <laughs> but he, but it, I, I, it's really like that. Like, I talked to like three people from high school. And then the mm -hmm. rest of them, since I'm living in the same town that I sort of, that I graduated, I see these yeah. people walk around like the Krogers and the Myers and yeah. stuff, yeah. but we've already said our highs and now it's just turned into let's avoid each other's eye contact. So we don't have to talk to each other. <laughs> and that's, and that works for me. That works for me. I don't want to talk to those people. That's the thing. Like I don't feel any need to go to my right. high school reunion or, or reach out I and haven't been to one. let's I hang haven't out been to guys. One. Yeah. It's like, I live primarily on the internet these days. And, and, and yeah. like most, a lot of my friends now are on the internet, which is very strange, but <laughs> these are the times, these are the times. But I do want to right. speak to what you were saying about Toledo and this area as an inspiration. When I left for California, I, I was leaving Toledo behind forever. And I was like, this place mm -hmm. is garbage. I never want to come back mm -hmm. here. I'm never coming back here. That was my thing. I understood. The idea understood. of, That's how I was too. Yeah. the idea of coming back was uh, 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 just complete failure, just complete mm. failure to come back here and to live back here again was just failure in my eyes. But uh, my wife is a very smart woman, uh, very clever, and she saw the signs of, you know, artists in California. It, they have a really hard time making it out there with the the high price of rent and, and property mm -hmm. values, you know, and we want to buy a house. Right. We're married. We have a kid. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, there's no, there's no, like, they we're kind of, like, we owned a business out there, but it was always hustle here, hustle there, do this, do that. And we're always hustling to get our rent in. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, she was tired of it. I wasn't, I wanted to keep, I'm, I was all ready to grind. Wanted until, to grind. I yeah, wanted to grind yeah. until, until we didn't have to grind like that anymore. Um, but, but mm -hmm. what ended up happening after we came back here, cause I thought my, my talent was going to just die on the vine. I thought I wasn't going to be able to work because I was working regularly. I was touring in California. And then when I got back here, it was like, it was just a bummer. But when I started to discover that there was something going on here and that I was actually able to make a living here. And then what was really interesting is that me and my wife's music, I should say my wife and I, because <laughs> it's really her music. Uh, it's her name. It's her music. But uh right. It, it, we what we found was is that people here are way more receptive and we found way more success here working as musicians getting that the attention that we couldn't get in california um mm. and it was just a it was just really eye-opening plus the podcast flourished here like mm. and i was just talking mm. to local musicians i'm talking to you know talking to some Detroit players from back in the day, you know, like some mm -hmm, real heavy hitters mm -hmm. from back in the day. Mm -hmm. And and right. it, it was just the Midwest made this podcast what it is now. And I'm not saying this podcast is anything like, but, but it's really, interesting. but it's really interesting to think that on a weekly basis, like 8,000 people are interested in what I have to say. 8,000 right, is a right. very small number in, 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 when you compare it to the other people. But like, for me, that's insane, you know? And that's right, not how right. it was in California. My mm -hmm. my people didn't come until I came here. So 
to speak on that a bit, I mean, like, yeah, I think that there is something about the Midwest that makes you a little more grittier and a little bit more, I don't know, there's a realism out here that you can't, you can't fake. Because you go out Absolutely. to California, I feel like ninety oh, percent of those people who are from California, or especially Southern California, no offense, uh, Janie, uh, I, I know you love LA and stuff, but there tends to be a little bit of <laughs> San Diego people suck. Oh my God, they are cut haters, but I, I love San Diego. Well, I brought my people with me, so exactly. I don't have to worry about the California people. <laughs> there you go. Mighty, mighty. Thank you so much for those that sub drop. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you, mighty, mighty. Thank you for everyone. Uh, mighty, mighty. Uh, let me do this real quick. Mata, mata. There you go. Uh, thank you very much for those subs. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, the, but, but there is something about, there's a realism here that I feel like... I mean, and, and it's, unmatched. Un, it's unmatched. It's, it's unmatched. I mean, yeah. like, and it's such a, it's just such a bizarre place because you can end up just talking to somebody in the shopping line and they're going to tell you their whole story. They're going to tell you about their wart on the bottom of their foot. They're going to tell you, you know, like where the, the cheap gas is around town. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, that, that might be me doing that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly but people. People you might here. see me and Meyer. Yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> no, the cheap gas is over on the south. You go to the right, south, right. you want the cheap gas. Right. But but it is, hey, behind the suit, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Behind that suit, my bad. Can we get a shout out for behind that suit? Uh, woo. Sorry, I turned the alerts off, guys, because I don't want to. But but I will give you this. I will give you this. Give me what. Just give. Me, I will give you guys this. Hold on. <gasps> there it is. That's for you guys. That's for you guys. I just. Just, just to get it out of your system because you know I have the alerts off. Um, yeah, but but uh, Janie, do do you agree with that? I mean, do you do you think that there is a sort of a realism here from in the Midwest that that you can't find in in the West Coast? Oh, definitely. Well, I can only speak for Detroit, and Detroit well, uh, will always be home. Mm. Uh, and I live in L.A., but Detroit is home mm. because this. Well, maybe again, the people there. And the people that I know there, the warmth and, you know, the caring and you go for a visit and you want to stay, but you know, they're going to put you out after a week. So you have to <laughs> I get back to Beverly Hills. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what do you think of like, like, I mean, weather wise, it's, it's, it's I mean, Southern California is unbeatable. Uh, you can't beat the weather. Is that part of the reason why you like to stay and, and and, and be there or what, what what's what's the reason why i mean why not move back and be with family back in detroit why why did you choose to stay out in beverly hills uh well why don't family move out here and choose to stay in beverly hills? <laughs> that's what i was trying to tell people that's what i was telling my mom mom move out here just come here just come we need help with this baby oh my god are you <laughs> serious <laughs> the weather i'm sure helps but even before that I was living here and got a feeling of the year round weather, I just loved LA and I, and I still do. But again, like I say, Detroit is home. Yeah. Well, I mean, Detroit is a cool city. I was in Detroit mm -hmm. a lot last year, but it was mostly to, to go to the, the trap, the trap houses, the, the, the illegal weed spots. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's where they got the good weed for cheap, though. Like, you got to go to Detroit yeah. to the trap houses or else you're not, you're not get, you're getting took. You're get, the you're cheap like, weed and the cheap gas, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was another reason. But you got to be careful. Sometimes you get what you pay for. Yeah, no, absolutely. The last time I went up there, I, this, I was like, this is the last time I'm coming up here because... It, right at the beginning of the pandemic, they were killing it. And then as the mm -hmm. pandemic kept going, it just kept going down and down. And by the time, mm -hmm. by the time I stopped going up there, like they were just like they had, it wasn't good. Yeah, it, it did mm -hmm. kind of go downhill um, after yeah. after a little while. But, you know, whatever. Hey, thank you guys so much right. for contributing to the salad galley. So um, <clears throat> I, I, uh, I have to, uh, I have someone, I have a guest that I want to bring on and ask some questions. Um, please give me a second. I want to bring them on. Uh, Baby Yoda, are you there? Baby Yoda, <laughs> can you can you hear me? I'm summoning Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. Hum, Baby Yoda. Hum. I'm, I'm summoning everybody. I'm summoning. Hold on. Let me summon better. Hum, um, um, Baby Yoda. 
Hey, baby Yoda, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? Pretty good, and I have something to say. What do you have to say, baby Yoda? What's up, baby Yoda? What you? Free. Everything in life is free. Everything good in life is free. Oh. Everything good in life is free. Is that is that your belief? So what are yeah. you giving away, baby Yoda? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what do you got for free that, that we want? Uh, <laughs> me saying stuff. Oh, you saying stuff is what we want. Okay, well, let me tell you, we can't eat off of your words. So uh, I'll, I'll just tell you that. Words are wind. Uh, baby Yoda, do you have a question for our guest today, Janie and Uncle Ray? Yep. Is there anything money can't buy? Ooh, that's a that's a good question, Baby Yoda. What, what's something that money can't? Yep. I'm sorry. They say that you can't buy love, but uh, if you give me some money, I'll love you. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, she said, hey. She wrote money, so you know, you know where her head's at. You know where Janie's head's at when you have a, a classic song like "Money." Uh, that's it. You can't buy. You can't buy life. You can't buy life. And just so you know, this shit, my mom told me to do this. Oh. My, mom, my mom said So that. Mama Yoda have you over here preloaded with questions? That's not how this works, baby Yoda. You tell Mama you, Yoda to stay it. out of it. I love okay, it. Okay, I'll tell. Uh, uh okay, hold on. Uh, uh uh Uncle Ray, do you have a question for baby Yoda? Um uh what planet are you from? Oh, that's a good question. What planet are you from, baby Yoda? Of course, the Star World War. The, the, the Star a Wars world. planet? Yeah, a Star Wars, Wars planet. A trillion years for a human being to get to this planet. Wow. That's a oh, long time. Wow. I don't think I don't think yeah. human beings last that long. Jane, did you have a question for Baby Yoda? Uh well, I I don't know what Baby Yoda's gonna tell me if I ask him a question. Baby Yoda. How old are you? Oh, that's a good one. 50. Oh, 50. I'm 50. Baby Yoda is 50. It, it works like dog years, uh, you know, so okay. that's how they age in Yoda world. On Star Wars planet, Star Wars planet, they age I'm, in dog well, years. I'm 50, I'm 50, but still a baby. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 50, wow. but okay. feeling 50. Baby Yoda. He, he's 50, but jailbait. Did he say he's jailbait? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but uh, he, no, he said, but he should have. Baby Yoda, are you jailbait? <laughs> baby Yoda, are you jailbait? No, I'm Baby Yoda. <laughs> great, great. Baby Yoda, everybody, give a round of applause. Thank you so much, Baby Yoda. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for stopping by. Whoop. Oh, my goodness. Baby Yoda, you you just got it going on. Okay, so I love it. we're, love we're it. getting close to the end here, J.D., I, 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 just so you know. Um, and the, the, the chat, they can make me do things, um, even if I don't want to. Even if I don't want to do them in front of a Motown legend. Um, but I have to because they use their channel points. So... Um, do you mind if I play a song for you guys? Real quick. Okay. Your song. okay. All right. I'm going to play a song for everybody uh, because it was requested by the chat. So just give me one second and I will. Uh, and and then we'll, we'll start wrapping up after this song. Thank you, Mighty Mighty, for those 200 biddies. Uh, let me see. Um, uh, all right. We're. we're there we go. All right. Ah, thanks, guys. Thank you for making me do this in front of <laughs> Motown legend Janie Bradford. You, you, you rascals! You rascals! Um, I, I mean, if, if it was just if it was just Uncle Ray, 
No problem. Bro. If it was a, I like, we've, already, we've already we've we're, already played in front of each other. Exactly. Before, we're know? friends. So. We're good. <laughs> right, right. We're all in your corner. Thanks, MMA Mark. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh, let me make. All right. <clears throat> This is uh, for chat and for Janie Bradford. Here we go. <laughs> it's raining tacos from out of the sky. Tacos, no need to ask why. Just open your mouth and close your eyes. It's raining taco. It's raining tacos. Out in the street, tacos. All you can eat, lettuce and shells. Cheese and meat, it's raining taco. Yum, yum, yummity yum, it's like a dream. Yum, yum, yummity yum, it's more sour cream. <laughs> it's raining tacos. Ooh, tacos. It's raining tacos. It's okay, raining tacos. Oh, out of the sky. Tacos. No need to ask why. Just open your mouth and close your eyes. It's raining tacos. There you go. Nice. Thank hey, you, so guys. Can I book you for my birthday party? Oh, my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord no oh lord no Janie that, that is just right. not doable <laughs> two things two things Sure. One, one have you ever pitched that to any fast food taco restaurants <laughs> no I have not because it is actually a song that exists it's not my song it's written by um, oh, okay. uh, what's his name uh, Perry Grip Perry Grip he has like a bunch of crazy oh, songs hey thank you guys uh, oh. So much for all these biddies and the hype train. Oh my God, there's a hype train going on. Thank you guys for all the biddies and all the love. Can I book you then for my birthday party? No, Moving Dutchman. I'm not playing your birthday party. <laughs> well, you can't. Look, look. Like, like in 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 the in the words of Jane Janie here. Uh, uh, if you give me money, I'll give you love. And so I'll give you love if you give me money. So yes, <laughs> give me enough money. I'll come out there and I'll play your birthday party to sing terribly <laughs> and play guitar uh, mediocrely, mediocrely, whatever you say. Okay, my brain is melting. Now, now I'm hungry. Now I'm hungry after Dude. that taco slice. Like, I've been fasting. I was L cool. Listen, listen. About tacos. Ray, don't tell me <laughs> about hunger, okay, Ray? Look at that. Um, this, is, this is what I'm eating. This is what I'm eating, okay? This right, is what I'm right. eating. I'm eating this. We're, we're here, man. I got you. I got you. I understand your plight. <laughs> Janie, as we're wrapping up here, I, I'm just, you know, you. thank you, Bonnie. Thank you guys again uh, for all the biddies and all the love. And uh, we're going to be doing Cypher Deluxe here in a, in a bit. So if you are interested in doing Cypher Deluxe, go <coughs> ahead and jump in the Discord and... Uh, and uh, 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 go ahead and sign up under the text channel Cipher Deluxe, and uh, we'll do it in in order. And even Ray Ray has something to present as well, so Ray's gonna stick around, and we'll we'll let Janie go because uh, I'm sure you have plenty to do. And uh, unless you <laughs> unless you want to stick around, it's up to you. But uh, I, I just thought it would be polite to cut you loose since you've been sitting here for like two hours so uh but uh I, I am curious on uh what 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 did you do over quarantine what was your did you accomplish any goals did you accomplish any anything that you were trying to do for a long time and then you were now that you had the time to do it you did it was did you uh how was your quarantine well my husband smiles a lot he smiles a lot. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. I like that. Yes. 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 Awesome. That is dope. Well, I. Besides, besides, uh, besides, uh, you know, your husband being very happy. Was there anything else? professionally or personal that you were able to uh accomplish with this time off that everyone this 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 enforced time off well this is no just kind of worked on the house rather than creative stuff that mm. i needed to do around the home 
Oh, okay. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. How, how, what was your, what was your, uh, I mean, like, how, how was your, uh, how did you take this quarantine? How have you been handling it? Like, is I mean, great, great, because I, I, I love to stay at home unless I'm going out partying or something, but I, I have enjoyed it. Oh, wow. uh, I've gotten a little cla- claustrophobic. Yeah, I want to go out and do something, but now there's nothing to do. But it's beginning to open up a little here in California. So yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I know. I know uh, that that California had much different restrictions than Ohio did. I mean, mm-hmm. I was just I, I tell everybody now because I just think it's hilarious. I haven't worn a mask at my gym in, in, <laughs> in like three months. Like they give zero shits here, like just zero. Uh, so it, it's uh, it's been really interesting. <laughs> Uh, how about you, Ray? What were you able to? I mean, I know. I mean, you told us a bit. I, I mean, you were able. You you sort of jumped yeah, I, into I, your. I, I dug in. I dug yeah. in. Um, I I'm already done with another album. What? Um, but I'm yeah yeah. So yeah, I was. That's what I was doing with my quarantine. I just dug in, man. Yeah. On the creative side of it. So and I'm working on another one for next year. That that's yeah. awesome, <laughs> man. Is, is that what you want to do? Do you want to do like uh? Do you want to do uh, like a yearly release type of thing, or, or? I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start doing. You know, I, like I said, um, I'm just getting acclimated to the new way music is marketed. You know, I come from the uh, selling CDs out the trunk here. Right. You know, so I'd be making a killing right now if that was the case. But you know, with all the streaming stuff, um, I'm just getting acclimated to it. Um, uh, she was one of the people who encouraged me to do that because wow. you know I was always coming up with some excuses like. Uh, well, I don't, you know, I don't know how to, you know, and one day I was on my way home and I said, I'm going to just release a, a song. I'm going to just pick a song and release it. And uh, that was that If I Could Fly. Mm. And so, you yeah, know, once, once I, I did yeah, that, that's right. That was the first time you came on because I heard your mm-hmm. song. And I was like, this is incredible. How did, <laughs> Thanks, how is <was> this a <laughs> Toledo artist? Like I just, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I, which I'm not trying to disparage Toledo artists because there is, uh, you, there well, is some heat here. There's, there's some real lot, talent. There's, there's some, some real very talent. talent. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, uh, that, that's great. And, and then Janie, is there, do you still do any kind yeah. of writing and publishing? Uh, yes, I do. Mm-hmm. I do. I continue to write. You know, a writer, we can be, what, 90 years old and still write, but I'm opposed to a singer trying to climb up on the stage and can't even get on the stage that age. Right. <laughs> you can always write a song. <laughs> I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Ray. <laughs> right. Oh, man. I'm definitely getting, I'm definitely getting there. So, yeah. so, so then, Janie, before we let you go, yeah. Um. Is there anything you want to impart on anybody, or is there any words of wisdom, or is there? Oh, actually, I do have one question before I you answer that last question. What's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? I'm glad you said as, as of advice. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well. And I'm slow I today. Recall. I need to eat. Let go. I'm delaying my brain, dude. I'm so yo, slow today. Yo, yo. Me too. Me too. Janie's quicker than both of us right now. She's like on it. Right. I'm like sitting there like catching up. Janie's like already 20 miles ahead of us. My goodness. Uh, I love your spirit. I love your spirit. Um, but but what okay. do you have? Uh, do you have a, uh, a piece of advice that someone gave you that you just hold dear to you? I can't think of any. I got so many from I Mama, bet. from Daddy, from Mr. Gordy, from yeah. <laughs> and mine was just and uh, I know the Isley Brothers. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. That's hey. it. That's that that's it right there. That's it right there. It's your thing. Words do what you want. I love that. By. That yeah. is great. All right. Well, then mm-hmm. we're we're gonna end on okay. that. Then we're gonna end on that because that you can't you yeah. can't you can't top that. You can't top the Isleys. Not at all. Janie Bradford, thank you so much for thank being on the show. Thank you so much. I, I it was beautiful. Oh my God, this was just a, a dream okay. for me. So thank you. Oh, she's out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Janie, thank you so much. You you're gonna have okay. to hang up okay. on your end. I'm trying to. Oh no, okay. Bye bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Maybe I can do it from here. Hold on. Oh, she's still there. I think she's still there. That's all right. I think she has someone to help her. All right, guys. We're going to do... Hello. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you for helping us today. Just turn it off. Yeah, okay.
<laughs> She's like, just turn it off. Right, right. I think if you touch the screen, the red, the red button. Hold on. Right. If you touch, if you touch the screen, a uh, red, a red phone button should pop up. Oh, there we go. Thank you. you. No problem. There it is. There you go. All right. Let me uh, <laughs> let me readjust some stuff here, and uh, we're we're gonna get into cipher what deluxe. What we doing now? Okay, we're gonna do cipher deluxe. So, um, uh, um, Holden, Holden is gonna do uh, a quick. Uh, cause I think Holden streams right after this. So let's get Holden in here and then we're going to listen to a song from, uh, the song that Janie, why don't we just do that now? Why don't, while I'm changing over? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, the song's pretty quick. So while I'm changing over to scenes, uh, we'll play a song and then we'll get Holden in here and, um, uh, maybe I'll do something, but I, I already played tacos. So I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we're going to BRB. This is Uncle Ray's song that was co-written by Janie 